uh, to that light, for those who don't uh, know uh, what it is about, uh, uh, a couple of slides and we can have a short discussion on, on what you think. So as you may know, uh, OCPP 2.0.1, uh, the, the most recent version, uh, has a lot of functionality in it. And we are working on a 2.1 version, which will add even more functionality. And we'll have a presentation on that during the town hall and also, in the, uh, I think, tomorrow or in the afternoon. We have, uh, tomorrow we have a, a presentation on everything that will be added to 2.1. Um, which is of course good, and there's a big part of the industry who needs all these added functionalities. They need payment terminal support, they need bi-directional charging, they need energy management interfaces, so all this stuff that we keep piling on OCPP, which is all very important for a certain industry. At the same time, what we learn is, and we'll go into that a bit more deeply, uh, there are also other regions that are also electrifying, just as important as the work that we're all doing here, for instance, in the Netherlands or in Germany, uh, but who don't need all this extra functionality and they have other challenges. And that's what we're going to address in uh, OCPP 2.light. So the markets, you can sort of maybe imagine what do those are, those booming markets who need a lightweight implementation for low cost. And I'll show you a couple of slides of the input we've received from OCM members. And we framed it to that light because it's exactly the same as 2.01. So it's not breaking, it's compatible. It's just something that is exactly the same as 201, but just in a lighter way. So maybe with less functionality, maybe some parts skipped, maybe with some other changes. And that's what we are currently defining in this task group. So the first example, this is actually the market that triggered us to start with to that light, is the two-wheeler and three-wheeler market in India. I'm not sure if you've ever been to India, but maybe if you've ever traveled to, to Southeast Asia, or maybe even what you've seen uh, on TV, uh, a lot of people travel by two-wheelers and three-wheelers, much more than with passenger cars. It's something like in other regions of the world, people use cars, but there they use a lot of motorbikes, uh, scooters, tuk-tuks, um, which are, of course, all, uh, currently also all running on petrol. And they want to electrify those as well. And in absolute numbers, the market in India for two and three wheelers is much bigger than the market for passenger cars. So this is a slide that we got from Ather. They make uh, electric motorbikes in India. And they said that for India, the Indian time frame uh, plans for having 75 million electric two wheelers by 2030 compared to 10 million uh, cars by 2030. So it's a factor seven. Uh, so it's a big, uh, it's a big market. Um, and also, this is a very interesting slide. At the moment, the charging hardware is sort of the same as for four wheelers. But if you look, if you compare like a passenger car with an electric motorbike, if you look at the average battery size, the average cost of a vehicle, you see that it's just a cheaper uh, mode of transportation. So relatively. Um, the, the cost that you have to uh, assign to having a charging station or even the data communication to the charging station is relatively quite significant. And these are, yeah, it's, it's like 8% if, uh, if you look at the hardware perspective and they calculate their 5% of the total cost for the communication costs. So this is where they're coming from. They're saying, okay, we have these low cost vehicles, so we also need a low cost charger. Doesn't make sense to develop charging stations that are maybe half the price of the vehicle itself. So this is where India is coming from. But it's not just India, another member of OCA, Micro OCBP, got this information from, uh, from, from Kenya, where they are also uh, uh, exploring electric two-wheelers, and there the mobile communication cost is a, is a, is a big factor, and they need to keep it really low. So also not just the hardware cost, but also the, uh, the communication that you would need to communicate with these chargers is something uh, to look to, for, uh, to. So these OCA members are helping us sort of setting a target. So what is the, the RAM uh, that we would target? What is the, uh, the number of uh, megabytes uh, of data communication we need to target? And let's see if we can uh, combine uh, 201 implementations or to the light implementations with those targets. So we have started this new task group, as I mentioned, we meet every three weeks. So we've had two meetings and the next one is in, 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 in two weeks time. And we sort of identified three tracks. 
So the first track is already really important. What do we already have with 2.0.1? If you've seen the specification, there's a lot in it, but a lot of it is configurable and optional, so you can leave a lot of stuff out. You can have a minimum implementation of the device model. Uh, there, are all, there are all these options for start and stop points, but you don't have to use all of them. So even within 201, you can really make a minimal implementation already. And that's the first step that we're going to do, is what is the minimum in 201? What functionalities do you still have? And we have uh, someone who's going to code that in C++. So we also have a benchmark actually on how much uh, resources would this implementation take, just to see where we stand with uh, 2.0.1. Another thing what we can already do, and maybe you're not familiar with this, but we already have in the certification program the possibility to certify a mode one two charge, mode one two only charging station. This is something that they use in Korea, and we don't use it, but in Korea they do. And it's a charging station which has everything that, that the charging stations we are familiar with have, except for the mode uh, 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 two communication. So it doesn't have the PLC communication to the vehicle. Um, so what we've said, okay, they can certify for HPP 201 everything, but we'll just leave out the parts uh, that uh, you would normally need to test for certification that they just don't have. So this is also something that we can consider uh, skipping so functionality in 201, maybe particularly for this market. Uh, we don't know what we should skip. Uh, uh, definitely not security is something that we think is really important. Security can, uh, can require some resources, but we think even of course, it's uh, charging in India and Africa is no different than charging in, in North America or in Korea when you look at the, the, the information security threats, of course. So this is the first track. What do we have already and how far are we towards the targets that they would want in markets such as uh, Southeast Asia and, uh, and Africa, for instance? The second track is there are, of course, also a lot of things that we can do more within the 2.x family so it's not breaking with 201 it's backwards compatible but we can still change it to maybe focus more on reducing uh, the, the the demand for 2.x and we have a, a third track sort of there everything's out in the open so what is what can you do to usbp to make it more lightweight but which will totally break uh, but still, uh, we want to discuss that and see what options we have there. That might be some, some, not something for this year or maybe not even next year. But if that's what is needed to help those markets electrify, then of course that's what, uh, what we'll do. Um, so that's, and we want to do all those tracks sort of separately. So we don't say we will just do track one first and then track three we will do next year or whatever. So we'll do it in parallel. Um, what's really great is that we have some vendors, companies helping us with actual implementation because sometimes when you discuss improvements in a protocol, you don't really know, so you have like opinions. So what we want to have, particularly in this group, have a hard data. Um, uh, so we can base uh, proposals on their merits on, uh, based on, yeah, does it really reduce, uh, does it really have the effect we think it has, for instance, Compression, there was one example regarding, I forgot the name, some type of compression to make the data communication uh, smaller. And someone uh, tried it and it was 17% reduction, totally breaking, so then at least we know, okay, so if we totally break with OCPP and we get 70% reduction, maybe that's not uh, worth our while, maybe we should look for some, if we're going to break, maybe we should find something that yeah, gets us a little bit more uh, compression than only 70%. So this is sort of uh, maybe a bit too much detail, but this is what we have so far within 201. Um, the lightweight functionality, I also already mentioned this, if you look at 201 in part zero, it also already describes a minimum implementation of 201. I think Robert was the author of this part. If you look at part one, there is a description of a minimum device model. The device model can be quite daunting but you don't have to implement everything and a minimum device model is already very useful but uh, uh, move, moving more towards a lightweight implementation and in the certification part, part 5, you can see what features are all optional so you don't have to implement, you can run an OCPP 201 uh, charger just as easily without all these optional features and I mentioned you can even then have a special certification mode for, uh, for instance the mode 1-2 only uh, profile then 
on the transport layer, uh, I've mentioned the compression. There is already a, a, a description on a web socket compression. So you, this also something that's already in the specification. And within uh, mentioned that certif uh, certificates can have a, a quite an impact. There is already a provision there for 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 a reduced uh, load on your implementation. And then of course the code matters too. Uh, so whether you code in Python or in whatever, C to C plus plus is currently what we're using uh, together with the company for micro for, uh, micro OCPP to get what I mentioned this measurement. So how much RAM uh, does it actually? Uh, need to have some sort of uh, concrete data uh, to help our discussions. Um, this is all going to result at least of course in a white paper where we explain what you can already do with what we have and I mentioned the benchmark to, to gathering the data to sort of see how far we are off the mark. Um, this is what we have in the, the and we don't need to change anything to OCPP uh, to do this. Track two and three are more of a discussion, what can we do more? Uh, options are on the table and this is of course a call to you all. If you have some thoughts or ideas or suggestions, yeah, just, just suggest them in a group and then we can see if those are good uh, ways forward to uh, reduce the load of OSPP even more. So this is uh, our call and what we always do. If you haven't yet, uh, please join the task group and help us uh, develop this in, in the next few uh, months. We are aiming for our first white paper around the summer, if that's possible. And uh, of course, at the end of the year, it would be great if we have more concrete uh, stuff to show for this. So this was uh, uh, where we are now. And as I said, it's only two meetings, but uh, it's a nice group. So you're all invited to join. <laughs>